Oh, hey, Dr. Amy here. Hope you guys are having a lovely Saturday. It is perfect outside. Oh my gosh. Um, but okay, so I wanted to hop on here very quickly and uh, finish up the latter part of the Turkish get ups and um, going over from this half kneeling position after we get to this side bend and standing up with that kettlebell overhead. What's up, Clean Juice Run Club? Um, so uh, it's awesome outside. It's uh, non-humid and uh, I got my coffee in hand. Old school Wonder Woman cup. Um, although, quick tidbit, I've never really watched Wonder Woman growing up. I was a Superman fan and Batman and never really watched at all. <laughs> But I guess that's something that's on the, the list to watch, especially the new Wonder Woman's that came out. I heard those movies are pretty awesome. Okay, so finished up the latter portion of the Turkish get up. So um, after you get into the half kneeling position, we're gonna stand up from that position. So just to quickly go over the movement, all right, first movement is elbow, hand, hips, knee to hand, good side bend, boom, ear to bicep, and then from this position, you can totally reposition your, your foot, and all you're gonna do, most of the leg on this front leg, you're standing up, that's it. Full body movement. And then getting back down from the stand up position, you're reversing that whole process. So, kneel, plant the hand, boom. All right, we're not gonna, oh, you hear that? Sit back on our, our knee, no bueno. Awkward forces through the knee, we're gonna plant to the side. Boom, drive that hip through, butt, elbow, back. Okay, so awesome exercise with the Turkish get up. Literally works your whole body. Um, so that's why I'm a huge fan of the Turkish get up. And um, I, I truly 100% believe that Everybody should learn how to do this movement. Um, and not only do you build strong shoulders, but you build strong coordination, right? Quality of movement, which then carries over to simple things such as picking up something from the floor or doing a deadlift when you're at the gym and even a shoulder press when you're at the gym too, or reaching up overhead um, maybe something that's on top of your refrigerator or maybe on a shelf that might be a little bit heavy. All of this stuff stems off of each other. But um, I just wanted to finish up with that latter portion of the Turkish get up. And after you're in that standing position, you're just reversing that whole process down. So um, don't forget, uh, looking back on the previous Instagram stories, um, as well as the story page of mine, um, I explain each Turkish get up process to almost to the T, but um, just kind of wanted to finish that up today. And uh, you know, you can do the Turkish get up with a dumbbell as well, or nothing, just without weight, right? Just getting movement through the shoulder. Um, just a little quick tidbit. I actually, this morning, as part of my warm up, um, had bottoms up kettlebell windmills from my knees. So I'll kind of just demo those very quickly. What's up, Miss Kim? And um, kind of uh, show you uh, that when you put that kettlebell in the bottom up position, it creates an unstable environment for the whole arm. Okay, and then you add a body movement to that and um, it, it's quite surprising that you will notice or feel one side's probably gonna be a little bit more imbalanced. And that's okay, right? Because it gives you that data. But I'm just gonna demo what I had to do this morning 
um, since I'm already here and we finished up with the Turkish get up. But this is called a bottoms up kettlebell windmill from the knee position. So I'm gonna use my weaker arm. This is my left arm. When you guys are looking, this is the right arm. So the bottom portion of the kettlebell is facing towards the ceiling. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna push it straight up. And I'm getting into this windmill position. Hand's gonna plant, try to get my elbow down, and back up. Awesome, awesome shoulder stability exercise. Um, I love it. And then as you progress and get stronger, you can get a heavier load. I think that one's only about 12 pounds. So, but that's kind of it that uh, I have to talk about today. Um, we'll see what the next couple weeks or the next couple coffee talks brings us. We're going to start going over some movement things and, and start becoming more of a um, like a thinking athlete, um, what I'm thinking when I'm performing a specific exercise. Um, so if you guys have any specific exercises that you might want to go over, let me know. Um, I'll kind of help break that down for you so that you be you can become more aware of your movement, right? Quality of movement over quantity. Because when we start reversing that, quantity over quality, that's where we're a little bit more prone to injury or um, little aches and pains here and there. So you always have to revert back to um, the foundations. And, you know, I always say this to my patients. Michael Jordan always worked on his foundations or the fundamentals, right? He would come in before practice and, you know, work on free throws, work on jump shots, mid-range jump shots, work on dribbling, right? That's what we got to do, and that's what we have to do in order to prevent um, injury from happening. And don't get me wrong, injury is going to happen, but if we can become more resilient and build our capacity, you won't experience injury as often. So, um, that's it for today. It's awesome outside, so I'm going to kind of hang out a little bit. But... Um, all right, let me know if you guys have any questions. I will talk to you later, and I'll keep you posted about next week. But, salut. And you guys have a good rest of your week. Talk to you all later.